and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Official observers from a Silba election observation mission were among those monitoring the presidential elections in Ukraine, which took place on March 31st. In total, almost 2,300 observers from 19 international organizations and 17 foreign countries participated. To talk more about their assessment of elections transparency, we're joined in the studio today by Armand Spahia. He's an international election observer of Silba election observation mission. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, so what's your uh, general um, impression of the election process in Ukraine this time? I think according to what we saw on mm -hmm. Sunday with my team, uh, there was a quite a calm atmosphere at the polling stations. Mm -hmm. Seeing the general mood was very much about um, the importance of, of the, this election for uh, Ukraine's future. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed traveling around to all the polling stations. How many polling stations did you actually uh, observe? Did you, did you visit during yeah. the election day? My, my team, we were in a team of two. We did eight polling stations that day. Mm -hmm. um, but from our group as a whole, there were people who did a six and a 12. So it depended on, on the region they were in, in the city. Mm -hmm. How numerous was your group of the Silva organization? How many people actually participated so, in the observation? Uh, we were with 28 observers, 28. Uh, okay. split in teams of two. Mm -hmm. And we also had the five coordinators who were in our accommodation in the headquarters, uh, and we had contact with them the entire day. Mm -hmm. All right, we had 30,000 polling stations in Ukraine on the election day. Mm -hmm. How did you choose the stations you wanted to visit? What was your criteria? Uh, essentially, the distribution of the, of the teams was decided by the coordination team. Mm -hmm. uh, as a whole, we covered uh, 110 polling stations in Kiev only. Um, and our coordination team looked at the housing prices mm -hmm. in Kiev. So we were quite spread out uh, in the residential districts, in the political center of the city. Um, we essentially covered quite a big area, around six kilometers, seven kilometers in radius. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we got that 110 polling stations. Mm -hmm. Okay, did any of your uh, team members have any complaints filed with them from the voters? From the voters, yes. We, we had some instances where people... Okay. Um, for example, not properly registered on the voting list. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people, actually, because oh. my birth year was uh, written the wrong way. They thought that I was four years older. And you were allowed to vote? or Yes, they corrected it, and then, and then they let me vote. That's fine, because they, they can file a, uh, an act mm -hmm. about that occurrence, as far as I uh, understood it. Okay, but I, I'm not talking about the election commission, I'm talking about the voters, the Ukrainian citizens. So yes. did any one of those filed any complaints with you personally, with, um, the, with your member teams? As observers, we're not really allowed to, to intervene. Mm -hmm. We've had instances where voters came up to us to ask for help or, or something. But as an observer, we tend to stay back and usually they were uh, helped further by the polling station official, officials or some local observers who were also present. Is there a list of criteria you had to evaluate as an international observer on the election day? Yeah, we take with us uh, several forms mm -hmm. and we look at uh, how the polling station, uh, how, how the distribution of the polling station is. So who is the chairman? What does the secretary do? How many polling station officials are there? Um, and also how, does, how the voting process goes for the voters that enter the building mm -hmm. because it's laid out what they should do, but sometimes there are so small irregularities, as you notice, mm -hmm. with the voter lists, or maybe that the, the voting booths are not fully secret. Uh, those are kind of the criteria we look at. Okay. Uh, what was your job when the polling stations closed at eight o'clock? So did you have to do anything else, or was your <coughs> job done? Over? No, no. Okay. Uh, what did you do? At the end of the, the, the at the end of the day, before eight o'clock, we decide a polling station to return to. Uh, or maybe find a new one, but it's maybe it's better to return because mm -hmm. you, you could have mm -hmm. noticed something during the day. We entered before eight, and essentially we joined the counting process as observer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not allowed to help in any way with the counting process, mm -hmm. uh, and we stay there until it's finished. Okay. Did you see any nervousness on the people who were counting the votes? Yes. <laughs> you did. Yes. Okay. But did you did you notice any um, uncertainties? Did you did you see any violations during the counting process? Um, it, it seemed to us, and it's something we already noticed during the day, that some polling station officials, mm. um, their train that their training wasn't sufficient in some cases. Okay. Um, it seemed to have been caused by either um, 
the, uh, the polling station officials being dependent on their past experience mm -hmm. instead of looking at the changes in the Ukrainian electoral law. Mm -hmm. And in my personal, in my polling station where we uh, joined the counting process, there were some verbal arguments between observers and between polling station officials about how the counting process should have gone and if it was according to law what they were planning to do. Um, and they switched it around a couple times until mm -hmm. they finally decided a certain way was the best way to do it. Okay. Speaking of experience, is this your first election process that you have observed here in Ukraine or anywhere in the world for that matter? Uh, I haven't had any experience in Ukraine as an election observer. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined, but overall? Overall, I've been in Armenia for the uh -huh. electoral, uh, for the presidential election. And the team consists of uh, very experienced people who've been to many countries in Eastern Europe and, and Central Asia, including Moldova, uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. um, Hungary, Lithuania, several other countries as well. Okay, would you call this election process and the presidential election day here in Ukraine on March 31st, would you call it transparent? Um, I'd say it's quite, it was quite transparent. The mm -hmm. Ukrainian electoral law is based on, on an international standard. And according to Silba methodology and what we observed, it's something that, that's being complied to. We do think that there are several issues, one of which is the, 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 the registration system, mm -hmm. which, have, which had, yeah, very obvious issues during the day. Also, the training of the polling station officials, as, I, as I've said before, and the information that may be available to the voters about how the voting process goes. Mm -hmm. That will also be something that will be very beneficial to maybe invest in. Yeah, right, for those who, who get to vote for the first time. Yes, like exactly. Those who reach exactly. The, the voting age. Thank you so much for coming in, clarifying and giving the evaluation of the election process here in Ukraine. You're very welcome. That was Arman Spahia. He's an international election observer of Zilba Election Observation Mission. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV.